Hello, today we are going to be making tomato vegetable juice. And want to know what's so exciting? Marie has been spending all winter writing all of these tomato recipes that we are going to be making for you over the next few weeks. I have. We have a total of 33 recipes that we want to share with you guys. It's just, it's amazing the number of things that you can do with tomatoes. Oh, oh tomatoes is a staple in my pantry. I couldn't even imagine going without it. Like at all. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So this tomato vegetable juice is kind of similar to like a V8, but it doesn't have the thickness of the pulp, which is something that I like. I like it a little bit more clear. clear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I'm really excited about this because we use tomato juice so often at my home, not just as a base for like a soup stock or something, mm -hmm. which is one thing. My sister makes what she calls a V8 stew. Oh, okay. And so she uses something like this in, sure. in place of it. But so we sometimes will use it as a soup stock, but I love just to drink it. Right, you're right. Drinking it or even like making rice in it. I mean, it's yes. really good. Yes. So we're going to start out by chopping up 15 pounds of tomatoes. And you just want to put those into quarters. I'm using the Roma tomatoes, so I don't need to take the tops off because they're, they're little enough. It's not right. that big of a deal. But if you're using like a beef steak, then you're going to want to take the top off as well. Well, we have the 15 pounds of cut up tomatoes into our big soup pot. This is like my low country boil pot. Right. I love this thing. Yeah, no, this is fabulous. And you can use it for blanching too, right? Yeah, you've got yeah. it's got basket. like the little blanching basket mm -hmm. with the little hook that you can like pull out. But this is really good. You know, when you live in the South, you go do the low country boils every right, year. Right. This is our like contest pot. <laughs> no, that's We make fun. our soup in this one. Well, and it's great because a lot of times when you're making tomatoes, you've got a lot that you're putting in and cooking down, which is the case today. Exactly. We're almost going to need a stool just to stir this thing today. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> if you want your own one of these, we'll have a link in the bottom that goes to our Amazon affiliate shop where you can find all of the different uh, equipment and supplies that we use. Okay, so now let's start adding the rest of our vegetables. Yes. Now for the vegetables, the key is you want everything cut really finely except the spinach. That doesn't really matter. It'll break down really easily once it starts getting heated. Mm -hmm. Anyone who's cooked spinach knows that. So one we're going to start with one cup. And it's a mounding compressed cup. Mm -hmm. So then we're going to go with half a cup of finely chopped carrots. And half a cup of finely chopped celery. A third of a cup of beets. And make sure maybe you wear some gloves when you chop that one or you might have pink hands. Right. A third of a cup of onions as well. One fourth cup diced green peppers. And a fourth of a cup of fresh parsley. I can smell it already. I know. Doesn't I'm, it make you just yum. want to eat it? <laughs> Ooh. So we are going to go ahead and get this cooking. We want it to cook down until all those vegetables are really, really soft so we can get every last bit of juice out of them. Now that our vegetables have softened up, we've had them simmering for quite a while, probably, what, about an hour? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, about an hour. Mm -hmm. So we just worked on some other project. We were making some chili while we were doing it. Make sure you check out that video. <laughs> right, and we'll put a link up for you. Now it's time for us to run it through the food mill mm -hmm. because we want to get out just the juice. Now for this food mill, what it does is it it gets the the seeds and any any bigger bigger bits like the skins they'll come out on this side and that'll be our waste. Mm -hmm. But any of the pulp and the juice is going to come down out of the spout. And then I have my husband's honey filter, which I absolutely love. It's actually, it's metal mesh and it's super tight weave and it works so great for this. And I put that on top of my pan and I'll collect all of that pulp and I'll just use that to make spaghetti tonight. Excellent. We know what's for dinner. Now, if you don't have a food mill like this, you can use one of the pans with like the, the handle that mm -hmm. food mills it around or one of the 
the funnel sieves that you use the, the hand right. version. So just to let you know, if you don't have one of these, there are any of the food mills will work. Sure. And some people will even run it through a blender and then, and then they'll just filter it like this and, and that can work too. And this can get a little messy, this step. You might end up seeing us drip and, and stuff, but we're just going to start this as well as we can. We want to drink to dump out the sauce part. Mm -hmm. Now this one's had quite a bit of time to drain more. The longer you leave it sitting there, the more of the juice that's going to drain out. The first bit we had to pull out a little bit faster, so it still has some of the juice in it, but I'm okay with that. This is going to make amazing spaghetti tonight. It is. I mean, it's going to be really good. I'm sure there won't be any complaints. No, none at all. And then the second section of mesh is much finer. So I find if I take my spatula and just run it along it, it helps the liquid escape better. Because then the big particles aren't blocking the way. And you can decide how picky you want to be, how dry you want it. I'm not going to be horribly picky today. No. Especially if you're using it for right. spaghetti. You know. If you weren't going to use it for anything, you may want to make sure be a little pickier. But. Yeah, I can't imagine just throwing this out. Oh, no. It was for dinner. <laughs> That's right. All right. So now we have this beautiful. Stunning. Oh, and it cheese. tastes so good, and the kitchen smells so good uh -huh. right now. No, it's fabulous. Okay. So we're going to want to put this on the stove. We want to simmer it at somewhere around 190. Do not let it boil because you don't want to boil away all your juice. Mm -hmm. And you'll do that for 20 minutes before canning it. Do we add the salt in that? Yeah. Yeah. Now we need to add one tablespoon of salt. Well, we're trying this one-handed here. I wanted to be able to show you. You can see we have this wonderful electronic thermometer that goes off and tells us when we've hit the temperature that we want. So now we're just going to turn this off. Our juice is now up to 190 degrees. So now that we've turned the alarm off and we've recently stirred this, we now want to leave this on for 20 minutes. And remember, don't let it get so hot that it's going to boil. This is a fabulous tool, the thermometer. This is actually one that my husband picked up for me. But because it does have that alarm that lets us know you know, when it gets to that temperature, which is great because you can walk away from it without worrying about it. And so now I just have it set for 200 because I want it to stay somewhere in between 190 and 200. What that does is it lets us know when it's getting too hot, where we would need to turn down our burner. Our tomato juice is all ready to be canned up now. What I like to do is do one scoop of the tomato juice and then do my two tablespoons of lemon juice. I actually kind of like that there, okay? Just with the regular mouth. Keeps it a little cleaner. And so you do two tablespoons per quart. Oh, I moved too fast. That's okay. Now the table gets a drink. Thank you. So this is just to get the acidity level a little bit higher. You could put it right in the jar, but my lemon juice tends to be stored in the refrigerator. So because of that, I have to worry about it being too cold and breaking the jar. Then we're just going to top off these jars with juice and we want to leave a one fourth inch headspace. The headspace is the distance from the juice to the top of the jar. See there, we're getting close to the top, so I'm just going to take a small scoop and get us right a little bit more right there. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Careful, everything's hot. 
and it's such a pretty color. You can tell that it's got the beets and all those other vegetables in there too. Really beautiful. Tiny bit. Perfect. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and water bath these for 40 minutes if you're at sea level. Since we're at 1200 feet, we're going to go for 45 minutes. Now, if you have any questions about how altitude is going to affect your processing time or how to use a water bath canner, go ahead and take a look at this link to our canning basics video. And then we're going to try that. It won't have any lemon juice in it, though. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> We're still going to try that <laughs> when it cools. I'm going to be the dripper. This is always our favorite part, our grand reveal. Oh, and they're beautiful. Look at that color. Super pretty. Yeah. I love it. When these are some of my older jars, which I don't know why I like old things. My, my daughter is funny, my 14 year old. I'll be like, look at this jar, isn't it so neat? And she's like, yeah, it's an old jar, mom. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have up in my kitchen now, I have a whole set of really old ones that yeah. I'm keeping separate. My kids have asked the same thing. What are you doing, mom? I'm like, those are nice jars. Right, I'll be like, this one's from 1920. And yeah. she's like, yeah. <laughs> Of all the all the different things that have been canned in it and all the history, mm -hmm. I don't know. I like it. You know we have a jar fetish by now. Right. <laughs> We're like, ooh, jar! I like that. <laughs> but uh, what I really like is this juice in these jars. It looks beautiful. It's stunning. The color is gorgeous, and we need to taste it. We do need to taste it, and it's cooled down the stuff that we set aside. So yes, that's good. exactly. Now remember, ours doesn't have the lemon juice in it because we added the lemon juice right. straight into the jar. Correct. But we're going to taste it anyways, and I'm really excited to do this. Mmm. Mmm. It's actually a really thin B8. Yeah. 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 That's kind of how it ends up. Yeah. Which which I like because I don't like all the pulp that's in the V8. If you did like that, you could you could put a little pulp back in it. But right. this is perfect. For this me. is delicious. We're just gonna open that and that little bit of salty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I and like I it. love being salty, so mm -hmm. it's good. Super good. But it's not overly salty. It's just a really good subtleness to it. Yeah, yeah I like it. So we would love it if you would like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.